like, yeah, like people want to volunteer with us, but whenever they find out it's not all cute little bunnies, you know, and cuddling different fuzzy things, they're not interested. That's what I mean. And that's like the point of like, when you get back to money, like the Humane Society, and God bless them, the Humane Society and all that, it's easy to get donations when you show a cute puppy and a cute kitten. But whenever you show a possum, it's not the same. So our challenge is for raising money for what we do, you truly have to find the heart of people that love all wildlife or all animals. You know what I'm saying? And how many people do you guys have that work with you, like on a daily basis? I'm like about 15. Uh, Missy, you were sending me sort of a list of There's Well, they have, we have 15 active rehabbers that are there on a, on a, a average basis that they're there a lot. Okay, now, do you have an office? What do you have? All right, Missy lives on a double wide on 20 acres of land and the rehab uh, facility is cages and a, um, a shed that um, my brother and I converted into a mini veterinary emergency room. And we're about to expand the back. We're about to expand the back of the building. Um, we will qualify for a grant to do that because we have the foundation and the roof already. So that'll be starting production or construction soon to expand. That's good. Yeah. So are there people there every day who work there, or are there? I, I'm confused on how it works. I guess. Okay. Um, Missy's mom actually helps her out too, and Missy and there's uh, other rehabbers that are under our permits that come out on a daily basis to help feed, help change cages, help Missy with the critical patients, and um, you know, just you know, check on animals to make sure they're okay. They get checked two, three times a day. Some of the critical patients actually get checked a lot more because obviously they're in critical care. Yeah. yeah. Is mom wacky in any way? Oh boy. <laughs> Nothing but. <laughs> Wow. She's a little turtle hoarder, we call her. She will hide turtles from us if she thinks that they can't be released. She had them stacked in her closet in little containers. I'm like, she was in the hospital getting a procedure. She's had breast cancer. She's had a mastectomy, and she will run circles around us. And I'm like, what are those turtles doing in your closet? She goes, oh, my God, you're not supposed to know that they're there. They can't be released yet. It's hilarious. It's almost yeah. like if I were to explain the way her mom, you never watch those shows where like somebody leans in with a camera off to the side and like, well, they're never really gonna know about this. That's her mom to a T. And she sneaks and gets Dr. Askew without me knowing it, like if he's there at a party, I'm walking and they're at the kitchen table dealing with turtles, I'm like, what are y'all doing? It's a party. She's like, oh, you're not supposed to be in here. They're just taking care of the critters. I can just choke them all. Yeah, it's every day, all day long. Nobody knows. She was born in 49. Oh my goodness. I'm I don't serious. know how old she is. 68? How many do you know? That would be 69. So you just give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. You just don't worry about it. Yeah. Wow. 1949. My mom was born in 42. Dad, 37. So yeah. 2016. She's 67. Oh, who said that? Oh, that was me. <laughs> Just curious, who was that that just said that before your calculator got I'm sorry that you had to deal with this today. This is us every single day. Every day we're like this. This is let this. Me, is. Let me talk to Dr. Ask. Dr. Dr. Let's call you, Dr. Ask. All right. Yeah. Ask. I'll just not describe myself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that have that certification, and I want to be one of them. So that's always been my plan. 
But uh, they want you to work in a zoo for several years so you'd be able to show some exotic experience. So somewhere on the line, I went through my, uh, my ACZM classes, and while doing so, I realized that if I, I, I see more patients here in private practice and doing wildlife than the average zoo vet gets to see in a year, okay? Um, I see more species, I see more patients, so I, I realized it'd be better off to do it this way. So somewhere along the line, somebody said, well, maybe if you can document your cases. Did you just say species? Species. Species, okay. yes. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> don't make me throttle you, boy. <laughs> anyway, it turns out that uh, I, I, I realized I started documenting them and putting it on Facebook, and then Facebook wrote me this personal message saying, have you ever heard of a YouTube channel? Because some of your stuff's a little bit graphic, and, and uh, at that point in time, I, I started my YouTube channel, and now we're over 1,700 videos in, which is what yeah. you guys have been watching. Anyway, so that's where it started. You'll notice that a lot of those... Go ahead. Uh, it is monetized. I can say like in the last three years I've made over two grand, but it's all gone back into YouTube and uh, things like GoPro cameras. Um, you're being cameraed as we speak. Say hi, Mom. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so it's, it's pretty much paid, paid for itself and, and kept that going. I have not gotten any richer due to YouTube, uh, but it does keep me off the streets. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's why and how it started. And if you'll notice, a percentage of those the, those videos are mainly almost all exotic. And of the exotics, I would venture to say half of them are wildlife, and half that wildlife is where I start working with these guys uh, yeah. religiously. Um, there are other wildlife rehab centers on the coast, but none as good or as heartfelt as Wild at Heart. So, um, and I, I feel confident enough with them that I'm actually on the board. So I, uh, I, I love all the heart. These guys do awesome work. And do you have a family or partner? Um, I'm in the middle of a divorce as we speak. My wife did not understand my passion for medicine and started blocking clients and stuff on Facebook and not professional Facebook. So I, I had to get out of the relationship. Um, so January 17th might be the last day or the biggest party I've ever thrown in a long time. So it's, it's, it's nearing the end as we speak. Um, I have no children. This is my passion. It's always been my passion. I was born a musician, always loving animals. <laughs> I've been a vocalist for most of my life. Oh, I think too. Pretty cool. Yeah. He was almost in a rock band forever. I was in lots of rock bands. Actually. Well, no. All right. All right, Dr. Askew was supposed who who took your contract? Oh, well, that's that's another story. That's a story. That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, other people can follow suit and do the same thing. Right. 
He said it describes.
Next question. He's got to describe us. Don't. He can't get out of that. No. We won't He's got to describe it. us. He concurs. Okay. First of all, we'll start with Doug. Doug is, is one of these guys that probably had a passion for wildlife but didn't know it until he met Missy and started hanging out at Wild at Heart. Um, he's, he's, he's got a heart to go. He's out of the room now so I can say nice shit. Um, get out of here. I'm talking about you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we do see things pretty closely when it comes to our sense of humor. We're, we're pretty much right as rain. We'll, we'll come up with the same nasty, gross joke at the same time, and we'll be like, you know, it's, it's anyway. So he's like a brother from another mother. Um, and I think our relationship is going to get better over the years. Uh, we don't get to spend near as much time as we need to. Okay? Um, so anyway, so we, Doug and I still have this, this thing that's going to blossom in the future, and, and I think a TV show would make that even better. Yeah. Especially when you gang up against her. Okay, Missy. <laughs> Missy is someone that was working with another friend of mine that was doing some wildlife rehab, and at one point in time she was trying to, to learn a little bit more of that stuff and get another job, and she came to, to, uh, to apply with us. I, uh, as a general rule, I always had to meet all the employees before they came in to let them know, you know, if there was any problems. And one of the first things I asked them, is there anything I should know about you? Do you have any fears of animals? And of course, Missy had uh, confided to me that she had this fear of frogs. And I looked her in the eye and I said, you won't have that for long, but, you know, let's see how things work. And I started asking her about medical stuff. And, and I know now that she had actually said she had Meniere's disease. Um, or a mild case of Meniere's, but at some point in time, while describing Meniere's to me, she used the word Tourette's. <laughs> so, it's like Tourette's, but it's a sound. I don't know how she did it, but somewhere online, all I heard was Tourette's. So, my partner had heard the same thing and was like, no, we don't want to hire a Tourette's person. I'm like, no, you're wrong. We do. We do. We want to hire someone with Tourette's to put them up front at the receptionist desk. Because if somebody starts freaking out, some clients there, we all have an excuse. We can say whatever we want, and we can blame it on her, right? So it took about a week's worth of uh, of finagling, but I finally got Missy hired, and it's probably one of the best employees I've ever had because she not only learned the front desk and stuff work, but she also became a great technician and a great triage for the wildlife, and to this day still exercises that passion that I saw in her. Her head is getting big as we speak. Yeah, why didn't she have to leave? Yeah, get out of here. No. <laughs> anyway, since then, as she's her heart has just gotten bigger and deeper into it, and uh, and I can't say both these guys. I'm proud, proud as hell of both of them. Yeah. You know, I uh, I'm kind of stuck in the doctor doctor field, and and uh, I guess I could be a plumber or work on cars for a living, but I can't see doing as much um, as many graceful things in this planet than than I'm doing now. I was uh, I was talking to my parents that. It's one thing to believe in karma, but if you're not being graceful as you're walking amongst the planet and the animals and the, you know and so forth, then it's probably not going to be worth it for you in the end. Right. So ever since then, I've just been making it a daily thing to be as graceful as possible on this planet. Awesome. Let me let me give you the truth real quick. <laughs> a girl gave him an ultimatum. Oh yeah, <laughs> you become a vet and drop this rock and roll thing. Or you're not getting nookie. And he was like, okay, okay, okay that's cool. I told her y'all were going to start this crap. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's kind of true, actually. <laughs> I told her, Jen, I told you. Years ago, I was uh, in several rock bands. And at one point in time, one of the rock bands I was in a band called Like Crystal in Los Angeles was uh, up for our contract negotiations. And they wanted me to change my name. They wanted to change the band's name. Well, Like Crystal probably wasn't the best name for a band back then. but. Um, it came across the name honestly, uh, and it wasn't drug related. Anyway, so point being is, uh, I was told to change all these things, and they told me that it wasn't about our talent, it was more about um, demographics. And their demographics department said we'd be perfect if we signed, we just had to change so many things. At the same time, I was dating one of our groupies, who was a half Chinese and half Spanish woman, and she's still beautiful today. Um, and in uh, doing so, I was helping her study for her MCAT and her BCAT. Stir and, uh, burritos. Well, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Where the hell did that come from? I just thought it. Um, anyway, in the process uh, of helping her study one afternoon, she told me how smart I was and said if I didn't go back to school, 
then I would never sleep with her again. So back then, in, in 1987, 88, it was $5 a credit for a class in Los Angeles. So I spent 20 bucks and became a, uh, and started my debt career that I'm in now, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I have the worst cold. <laughs> as long as I don't see green, we're good. Yeah, I didn't even go to work today. Yeah. <laughs> this is work. See, that's what I am working, but I'm not at Purple. Um, okay, let me talk to the three of you. Yeah. Back three. Sandwich. No, I mean, I think we just want to get past this point. We've been through this process uh, quite a few times. Uh, this is probably the longest Skype that we've done um, and most successful because usually we do this in a place where we don't have internet. And um, it has kind of this, I mean, it feels better, but kind of just kind of like the way I work my life. It's like, you know, it will, if it happens, great, you know, and we're yeah. all in, but, you know. Yeah. Or you could fly me up there and I will kick doors in and flip desks over because I do that well. Yeah. And in the grocery store too, if he gets aggravated, he will knock everything off the shelf. Well, if you're not getting listened to, you gotta get attention somehow. Grant mm -hmm. Paul, you do that when we're shopping, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> you the best ass. part, the best <laughs> thing that Douglas does, and I will tell you this, is if you're in the store with him and he has gas, he will pass gas and run it and makes it look like it's you. <laughs> I, I, do not, do I do not approve of this. Yes. This commercial. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Um, <laughs> so business-wise, if we decided, all decided we wanted to proceed, I don't know if you've signed contracts with people before. Nope. We've got a lawyer. It's, a simple, it's like the simplest dumb thing where it just says, we want to make a TV show out of you guys, and you guys want us to make a TV show out of
I did. I love you guys' website. The thing is so cool. The real. I love that you said shitty. <laughs> and I like it that we would like be first. That's what it is. You look like an ex-girlfriend from high school. That's what you look like. You look like Nikki Naismith from k Pack, Michigan. Oh my god. I hope you're cooler than her. And here's, <laughs> and here's my thing. I don't want us to be portrayed as something that we're not. I, we are yeah. what we are every day. That's and, right. And that's just very Wait. important to me. I, we don't want that either. And yeah. See, that's another thing, like, when we talk to people down here, we're like, they're like, yeah, we've seen the show, they did Party Down South down here, and it made us look stupid, and we're like, we don't want to do that. Oh, no, 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 we don't do that. Okay, and good. also, I can tell you that we're successful, we have hit shows on, the, on TV, and that's what we I think that, that the way you guys run your business is perfect. We wouldn't know how to make people look. I love that. I love right. that. We have such an amazing reputation. Literally, we've got that owl hug was dug with that bird. It went around the world twice now. And we have a reputation with people and a rapport with everybody in the world, and we don't even know them yet. I mean, and they know us as they've been watching us since 2012. And we've been exactly the same since 2012. We don't change. You know, we yeah, just try to be, be better. We have no interest. It doesn't make us look good if we make a show that makes yeah. fun of people. <clears throat> Can I make fun of Missy? You can make fun of Missy, yes. Okay. Okay. He makes fun of my leprechaun shoes and it infuriates me. No, so I make fun of... Crazy. If something crazy or funny or wacky happens and we all feel like it's funny and appropriate for TV, then we'll put it on TV. Yep. Well, we're not going to... If somebody, you know, gets hurt or if somebody no, we don't need that. Not, that's not the kind of show we want to make sure. Okay, I have two two um, things that I would like to get. Like, have you seen, have you ever heard of Trailer Park Boys? Okay, well, there's this show where it's, it's not real, but it's like they're in a trailer park and they sell drugs and do all this stuff. But there's this one guy who, he... He says, like, instead of NASA, he says NASA and different things like that. Missy could probably trademark a new language called Missy Ism. That's my thing. She has no idea what she's talking about. That's what I call them. They're Missy Isms, and it's only <clears throat> my language. And my other question would be, like, if this does go um, to a point where we're going to be on a show, is it going to be something where we're going to have to travel around and like go on different things to promote it, or how does that work? Because I want to make um. That would be a good thing. Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. Wait. Yes. I need to tell you. We are. Probably, but you know, the first year of a show typically is when you're getting ready to go on tour, and you know, you want to make sure that And people want it. And then it's like season two where they're just, you know, publicizing the crap out of it. Okay. It's a hit. The first year for anyone on reality is disappointingly average and disappointingly not a money maker, unfortunately. It's okay. Because then we'll push on. There's just no, there's no good rules about how to pay reality people. And they, nobody gets paid anything, it, including the production company doesn't get paid much for the first round of Okay. The, that clears everything up that I was wondering. So. And years ago, we were actually contacted by um, National Geographic to go to um, Costa Rica to study some of the alligators there that were having, they called it a phenomenon with their eyes that were, it had um, the crocodiles. They had white, their eyes were turning white, well, it was just the salt content. Mm -hmm. And we could have chelated those and fixed that. So we might can get in touch with them again, too, and, and you know, see if we can. Let her do her job. If they yeah. wanted us to go with them, they could come with us, is what she's trying to say. All right, here's okay. something you have if to learn. If says we want to make this show, I have a lot of lovely producers who will do nothing but talk to you for hours about ideas and stuff like that. It's not that they would Can I call you Nikki? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Oh, I'm down. Oh, you're hoping you get to travel. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I was in the military for 20 years. Uh, we've got their <laughs> gran their grandparents live here. We're it's it's kind of fantastic. It's I didn't know you had some sort of court order where you can't go more than 500 miles from your home. No, their mom up and moved to San Diego, so without even talking to the court. So. Yeah. And we're in good graces, so there's nothing bad there. So it's all good. I'll do a video and, uh, and tour the place for you. We could do yeah. that. There's plenty of that on the YouTube channel too. So. Yeah. And it's nothing fancy. Really? It's nothing yeah. fancy at all. I've it's made stuff. Painted. It's not finished, but it is absolutely practical for us. I've made stuff out of like old picnic tables just because we needed a cage. So. Oh my God, she, that is Allie Mae Campbell written, I mean rewritten Beverly Hills Billies. This is what she does. When somebody gets, she gets aggravated with somebody, she says, I'm gonna blow his hair back. Meaning she's gonna yell at him and scream. <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, just hilarious. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, she's great. Um, for us to come to you for the first meeting? No, no okay. we come to shoot video for the for, for yeah. sizzle room. I gotcha, okay. I just was confused. We would probably, what we usually do is come down to say hi. I was looking at your tattoo. And just, oh, that's my kids. Can you see it now? No. Your arm's bad. It's too dark. Yeah, it's dark. dark. So you know the content is there, but no one has put it into a good enough content to where 
a producer or a channel would say, let's buy that. Yeah. I think that's what's been missing. And what people are amazed at is that we make what we have work. We are not this big fancy production, but we animals come first to us and we have different raptor centers, different facilities saying, I need your protocol on this because your animals heal quicker. Well, that's an honor for me yeah. to give that to them and they've been doing this for 40 years. This is grassroots. Yeah. This is this is as simple as it gets. So well, they're Yeah. You know? It's boring. And, and also, also, as you know, as you probably know, the bigger the center, the more, you know, whatever you want to call it, affluent or has the most money flowing through it, then you've got a lot of parameters on to, as to what you are willing to put on TV. Yeah, you guys are willing, you guys aren't you looking to... This is about the animals. Yeah. It very simply is about the animals. You want reality. You don't want keeping up with the Joneses. Right. 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 And honey, we as real as it gets. I'm in no way just um, simple. Not <laughs> we'll discuss all this later because this is just, you know. Do you have relatives? I have behaved, behaved myself. You have. I'm impressed. <laughs> You're rather subdued, I have to say. <laughs>
Are you from New York? Did you leave because of the sun? Flashbacks from high school. I know. <laughs> 